Hi, it's Alan Berg, and thanks for tuning in to the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. Each week, I'm going to bring you ideas, tips, tricks, and things to help your wedding and event business sell more, profit more, and have more fun doing it. Full transcripts of every episode are available on my website at alanberg.com. That's A-L-A-N-B-E-R-G.com. Please enjoy this episode, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you on more episodes. Hey, it's Alan Berg with the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. Welcome. Today, I want to talk about a subject that, gosh, I've been talking about this for over 20 years with people. Can you raise your prices now? And now is whenever you're listening to this. Now, it doesn't matter what day of the week it is, what month, what year, how long you've been in business. Can you raise your prices now? The short answer is, yeah, you can. Because in most cases, you're selling services and services, it's hard for somebody to compare apples to apples because if they want your results, they have to hire you and pay your price. So let's think about this. This is an exercise that I do with my clients and I've done it with audiences big and small. Think about in a normal year, the people that you do business with, how many people that have already booked you, already paid you, maybe you already have done their wedding or event, how many of those people would have paid more than they already did? So let's start small, let's start easy. How many people would have paid you $25 more than they paid you? Not per person, just total, 25 bucks. Whatever your price is, whether you charge 500, 5,000, 50,000, whatever the number is, how many people would have paid you $25 more? And the answer is probably everybody, okay. So if everybody would have paid you $25 more and you did, oh, I don't know, 20 weddings, 25 times 20, that looks like $500 in profit. Profit, right, because if you add money without, add price, sorry, raise your price without adding any other services or products, that all money is profit. Just like if you discount without taking anything back, you're giving away profit. But let's say you don't do 25 weddings a year, let's say you do 50. You do 50 weddings, $25, that looks like $1,250 in profit. So let's keep playing the game here. What if it was $50? What if it was $50 and you did 50 weddings, right? $50 times 50 weddings, $2,500 in profit. Should we keep playing, Johnny? Yes, let's keep playing. What about $100? 200 At what point do you start having customers that would have said no? And did you get more inquiries for some of those popular dates so that someone else might have said yes? Because if somebody says no and you can get somebody else to say yes at the higher price, well, you're going to make more profit then. So what I want you to think about is you may not be able to do this for every product that you have or every service that you have. You might actually not be able to do it on your base prices, but you can do it on the add-ons. So think about if you are uh, if you have uplighting as an option, maybe you can't raise the base price on the service, but they'll pay another $50 for the uplight because they already like you, they've already booked you. Or for a different food station, or for uh, a different, uh, for the arch, at, you know, the ceremony arch, maybe you can't get more on the centerpiece, but you can get more on the cere- ceremony arch. So. Think about this, and in your business, based on your prices, because I know some people are lower prices, you know, invitations and favors, and you know, some some celebrants uh, charge less than others do. Can you get the 20, 25, 30? I had a company that was doing uh, ceremony music, and they were booking out many, many ceremony musicians every year, and they raised the price by $25. And they raised it by $25, and they made five figures more of profit the next year because of the volume that they did, because they do hundreds of these ceremonies every year. They were they made five figures in profit, more than $10,000 in profit. So think about your business. Can you raise some of your prices? A dollar, if you're a caterer, can you raise a dollar here, two dollars there? Starts to add up when you have 100 people, 150 people at a wedding, the average in the country being about 140. So think about where can you raise your prices and how many customers would have said yes already. I was doing this with an officiant customer of mine. He was charging $600 for a ceremony. And go fast forward seven years, eight years, and he hadn't raised his prices. 
And we were talking and I said, you know, you, you could be raising your prices. And he just had never done it because everybody that reached out said yes. I said, well, that's the first sign. That's the first sign that your prices are too low. If everybody's saying yes, it means your prices are too low. You should be getting some friction, some resistance where they're like, mm, maybe it's a little more than I thought, but yeah, we still want you. So we took him from 600 to 800, which is a 33% increase. The next day he met with two couples. They both booked him at the higher price. Didn't blink an eye. I, I still think he could have been higher. And I've, I've seen this time and time and time again. There was a DJ at a mastermind that I did in Dallas one time, and he hadn't raised his prices in even longer than the, the, the celebrant. And we were talking about it. And I said, you know, you're for who you are and what you are and your experience, you're way underpriced for other people. And we talked about it and we talked about what other people are charging that, that are in similar situation as him, similar quality. He doubled his price, literally doubled his price. The next day, met with two couples. Both of those couples booked them at the higher price. You don't know if they're going to say yes unless you ask. And there's a phrase that I use all the time, little signs that I give out. If, if you're watching a video, you can see this. If not, I'm going to read it to you. It says, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So it's not up to you to decide whether it's too much. It's up to them. I remember doing a mastermind in Virginia and the woman sitting next to me did high-end decor and design. And she goes, you know, Alan, I wouldn't pay my prices, which I was kind of surprised. I was like, what, what, what do you mean? She said, well, I would never hire somebody to do what I do because I can do it. So it just seems it would be crazy for me to pay someone the prices that I charge to do this because I can do it. I said, well, do you have any problem charging other people that price? She goes, oh, no, no, they have no problem paying it. And it made me think, the person that sells a Rolls Royce doesn't own a new Rolls Royce. The person that's selling a $5 million home doesn't own a $5 million home, but they have no problem taking your money because they let you shop with your wallet. And I want you to let your customers shop with their wallets. And if they're willing to pay more to get your results, let them do it because that's additional profit for you. So. Play this game with yourself. Start small, $25, $50 if your prices are higher, $100. Again, total for the event. And if you do X number of events and you can make this much more per event, how much more profit, how much more profit is in that for you? I've had many companies coming back and thanking me because the, the, the biggest regret people have after raising their prices is not having done it sooner. So you can't do all the weddings and events in your market. You're only looking for a certain amount. Your customers that are paying for you already will have paid at least a little bit more. How much little more, little more, little more can you do? Another one of my clients just recently told me that they've done packages. And I talked about this on another podcast about packages versus a la carte. And they said, we're selling way more, not way more, but selling more of the top package than we had expected. I said, okay, good. It's time to redo the packages and have something that's even more expensive. Because if people are buying their top package already, some of those people would have spent even more, but we didn't ask, therefore we didn't get it. So we're gonna reconfigure that. So should you raise your prices? The answer is yes. Can you raise them all? Don't know, that's a more specific thing. I could certainly do a private consultation with you. We could figure that out. But reality is you could get a little bit more. I mean, listen, you could get a dollar more. And if you got a dollar more every time, you can go out and have lunch. If you got $5 more every time, you could have dinner. If you got $50 more every time, you can go on vacation. <laughs> so can you raise your prices now? The answer is almost certainly yes. Can you raise them all across the board? Maybe, maybe not. Can you raise some of them? For sure. I hope you think about it. Go back and take a look and make more profit. That is the goal here for you to have people have great, fantastic times at their weddings, providing wonderful services while also taking care of yourself and your family. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. Full transcripts of this and every episode are available on my website at allenberg.com. And if you have any questions about anything in this episode or any of the episodes, or you'd like to make a suggestion for a future topic or a guest for one of my dialogue episodes, you can email me directly at allen at wedding 
www.businesssolutions.com. Uh, please subscribe to this channel, post a review if your platform allows it, and if you don't get email updates of the latest episodes, as well as upcoming workshops and masterclasses that I have, you can join at connectwithallenberg.com. I look forward to seeing you on a future episode. Thanks.